Hey there everyone. In this video we're going to be talking about properties of logarithms. So using these properties will help us um, uh, you know, maneuver them around and help us solve more intricate equations. All right, so let's take a look. So um, let's think about some of these simple properties at first. Um, we have log base b of b. What is that? Well, we know that uh, it is the exponent on b that gives b. What do I raise b to to get b? Well, it's 1. Wha bam! There's our first property right there. Log base b of b is 1. And that works for any, any positive b, right? Uh, what about this one? Log base b of 1. What does that equal? Well, uh, b to the what equals 1. So b is a positive number. What do you raise a positive number to to get 1? It's always 0. That always works. And by the way, another way to see that is to think about the graph. The graph of a logarithm, um, when you plug in 1, it always gives you 0. See right there? That's the x-intercept. So that, that, there's another way to think about it is just by thinking about the x-intercept from the graph. Now we have uh, some nice properties. These are called the inverse properties of logarithms. And this is how they interact with exponential functions. So if I take b and raise it to the power log base b of x, so I put log base b of x as an exponent on b, what does that give me? Well, let's think about it. Um, what is log base b of x? Remember, log base b of x is the exponent that you put on b to get x. By definition, that's what log base b of x is. It's the exponent on b that gives x. Well, look what I did with it. I put it on b, so it must give x. There you go. Log base, <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, and you can do it the other way around, too. You can do log base b of b to the x. So here I'm plugging b to the x into the logarithm function. So log base b of something, well, that's, that's the exponent on b that gives this something, right? So b to the what equals b to the x. Oh, it must be x. So again, it does the same thing. These are called the inverse properties of logarithms. Ooh inverse properties. Now, inverse inverse of what? Well, this is telling us that the log function is the inverse, log base b is the inverse of b to the x. So you, you see, if you plug um, the inverse function into the function, you just get x back, and, and vice versa. If you plug a function into its inverse, you just get the x back. Why does that make sense? Well, the inverse just does the opposite of what the function does. So if the function takes you here, you know, you take x and you get f of x. Well, the inverse function goes the other way. It takes f of x and gives you back x. So if you plug f of x into the inverse function, you get back to x. Right? So that's what's going on. b to the x and log x are inverse functions. And you may have noticed their graphs look quite similar, right? There's, there is a nice comparison between the graphs. If I graph b to the x, it looks like this. If I graph log base b of x, it looks like this. And if you know something about graphing inverse functions, you know that to graph the inverse function, you just reflect the graph along the line y equals x. So if I just imagine that that was a mirror and I flipped this curve, reflected it across this diagonal line, guess what I get? I get this curve. So they are indeed inverse functions. And that's why they have this property that when I plug one into the other one, I just get back to x. It's just making this go in a loop. 
right? So that these properties are going to be very useful in helping us solve equations because when we have an equation we're going to apply a logarithm or maybe apply an exponential function and then try to get a solution okay and we were going to put we were going to put these properties to use to help us simplify the expressions that we come across all right so um, let's look at some examples of doing this uh, our first example is going to be the equation 2 to the x equals 32. We want to solve for x. Okay. Now, you might just through investigation be able to spot what the answer is, but let's try to use these properties to get the answer. Okay. Well, um, remember that logs are inverses to the exponential functions. So here I have an exponential function with base 2. So to undo that, I'm going to apply the inverse. So I'm going to apply log base 2. If I do it to the left-hand side, I also have to do it to the right-hand side. So I'm going to take log base 2 of the left-hand side and log base 2 of the right-hand side. Well, what is log base 2 of 2 to the x? Well, that was our inverse function, which I seem to have misplaced. Oh, there they are. <laughs> log base b of b to the x is just x. So log base 2 of 2 to the x is just x. Look at that. I got x equals. So x equals log base 2 of 32. So in other words, 2 to the what equals 32. Well, that's a 5 log base 2 of 32. Now, that would work uh, even if uh, we didn't, weren't able to get a nice whole number here. Because you may have noticed, well, that's just the same as what we had over here. Like, was that really useful? Well, it is. It is. And I'll, this will explain why right here. So if I had the equation 7 to the x equals 8, and somebody asked to solve that for x, well, now you can't just through observation you know, pick off that that was a 5, right? I, I mean, here you could, but here I don't think you can find, think of what the x would be. So we'll do the same thing. I'm going to take log base 7 of both sides and because these are inverse functions, that just becomes x. And so my answer is this x equals log base 7 of 8. And that's how I would write my answer. Just like the answer up here was 5. Here we were able to simplify this and just get an integer. Here you can't do that. It's like when you take cubed roots, right? Sometimes um, uh, if you take the cubed root of something like 27, you can get a nice integer. But other times when you take the cubed root of something like um, 9, you can't simplify it. You just leave it like this. Right? So that's the same thing that's happening here. Sometimes you can actually compute the logarithm and get an integer answer. Sometimes you can't, so you just leave it like that. That's the simplest form. Right? Okay, let's do another one. Let's do e to the x equals um, 19. Okay, well, i got to get the x out of the exponent. What will I do? Well, what were we doing? We were applying the inverse function. What's the inverse function to e to the x? It's log base e. What do we call log base e? We call it ln, the natural log function. So I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. These are inverses, so that becomes x. And there's my answer. x is the natural log of 19. There's no way to simplify this any better. Um, let's do another one with log base 10. I think I gave the answer away. <laughs> 10 to the x equals 3. i got to apply the inverse function. What's the inverse function to 10 to the x? It's log base 10. What do we call log base 10? Just log. Right? So I'm going to take the log of both sides. These are inverses, so this gives me x. So there's my answer. x is log of 3. All right. Um, let's just do one more here. Just realized I had another one lined up. 
Um, let's look at this one. Here we have logs at the beginning, and I want to get rid of the logs. Well, what can I do here? Well, I can use the other property. Remember, that wasn't the only property that we had. We've been using um, this. We've been taking the log and using the fact that the log of some of b to the x is just x. But look at this. I can. I also have this one. If I have logs, I can put them as an exponent on b and get x. So that's what we got here. We have logs, right? So what I can do is write them as exponents on the base, which in this case is 3. So see what I did? I made these exponents and put them on 3. Now, where can I go from here? Well, these are inverses, right? 3 to the x and log base 3 of x are inverses, so that just gives me x. Okay, so is my answer just this? Well, yeah, but we can simplify this. Remember what log base 3 of 14 is? Log base 3 of 14 is the exponent that you would put on 3 to get 14. Right? That's by definition what this is. It's the exponent on 3 that gives 14. Well, so if I put it on 3, I must get 14. Another way to think about that is, again, these are inverses. So they kind of cancel each other out, right? Inverse functions cancel each other out. And also what we're seeing here is the one-to-one -one property of logarithms. If we write this in a little more general form, if I write log base b of x equals log base b of y, I can do the same thing. I can raise put each side as an exponent on b. The b's and the logs cancel. I get x equals y. And of course it works the other way. If x is the same as y, then of course the logs are the same. This is called the one-to-one -one property of logarithms. We had a one-to-one -one property of exponential functions, and we also have a one-to-one -one property of logarithms. Okay. Okay, more properties of logarithms. Okay, so here I have three different expressions here, and we are going to write down uh, another alternate way to write these down. So this will be a property of logarithms that we can use. For the first one, the log base b of m times n, you can write this as log base b of m plus log base b of n. Multiplication becomes addition. For this one, log base b of m over n becomes log base b of m minus log base b of n. And what about this one? Uh, this becomes p times log base b of m. So look at what's happening here. This is really interesting. Um, the logarithms are taking the order of operations down a notch, right? Most people would agree that multiplication is one step above addition, right? Well, this is doing the opposite. It's taking a multiplication and bringing it down to addition. It's taking division, bringing it back down to subtraction. Taking exponentiation, taking it down a notch to multiplication. So that's a really useful aspect of logarithms. Now, what I want to do is take a moment and prove this, all right? Uh, let's just see, why is this true, right? Well, let's start with the right-hand side, all right? Well, if I want to investigate this, I think one natural thing to do is to try to use the inverse function, okay? So here we have three properties. I want to do a proof of property one, okay? So to see this, I'm going to start with this and take it as an exponent on b. What do I get when I do this? Well, remember properties of exponents, right? b to the x plus y is the same thing as b to the x times b to the y. 
That's a property of exponents. Well, I can use that property here. Here I have b to the x plus y. I can write that as b to the x times b to the y. Okay. Well, how can I write this? Well, these remember, these are inverse functions. They cancel off. These are inverse functions. They cancel off. So what do I have? I have m times n. These are multiplied, so these are multiplied. Now, let's, let's interpret this. Um, this is saying that this guy is an exponent on b that gives m times n. What's the exponent on b that gives m times n? That's the log base b of m times n. So that must mean that this is equal to, by definition of logarithms, must be the log base b of this, m times n. And so we've proven number one. And you should, as a challenge to yourself, it's not really a challenge, I think it's pretty straightforward, following the same, the same line of reasoning, essentially the same, a little bit different, you can prove these other two. Okay, that's just how we prove these. And these are gonna be useful for us, especially because they're allowing us to take order of operations down a notch. And that's, that's really exploited a lot when people use these in the sciences, okay? If you ever heard about somebody taking, making a log graph of something, you might, you might have heard that or hear of it in the future, that's what they're doing. They're trying to take something that was kind of complicated and they're making it simpler. Okay, so um, let's take a look at these. What we want to do is simplify. Let's see if we can simplify these expressions. The first one we're going to do is log base 3 of 3 times y. Okay, log base 3 of 3 times y. Well, look, I have a product of two things. The log of a product is the sum of the logs. Remember, it logs, log takes products down a notch to addition. So this is going to be log base 3 of 3 plus log base 3 of y. Now, what's log base 3 of 3? Well, it's the exponent on 3 that gives 3. Well, that's just 1. There we go. Okay, let's try another one. Log base 7 of 49 over t. Well, remember what log does to division. It makes it into subtraction. So this is going to be log base 7 of 49 minus log base 7 of t. What's log base 7 of 49? Well, remember, it's the exponent on 7 that would give 49. Well, we know that that is 7 squared. 49 is 7 squared, so that the exponent is 2. Okay, so we were able to write this like this. Uh, let's try another one. Um, log base 2 of 64. All right. Now, you might be able to do it a different way than I'm about to do it. You might be able to see what it is, right, just by using the definition of logarithm. But let's try it this way. I'm going to observe that, hey, you know what? I know that 64 is, um, well, that's, that's 8 squared, right? So this is log base 2 of 8 squared. Well, we have another property. It, it takes exponentiation and turns it into multiplication, right? This is 2. This thing comes down. 2 times log base 2 of 8. That was our third property. Log of m to the p is p times log of m. Right? So that p came out front. Now, what's log base 2 of 8? Well, it's the exponent on 2 that gives 8. That's 3. And so the answer is 6. 
log base two of 64 is six. Okay, so we've used each one of those properties. Let's use them a couple more times. And in these problems, we're gonna be asked to expand the logarithm. So here's our logarithm. I want to expand this out. Expand. Well, what do they mean by that? Well, it means to use these properties. I don't know if you notice, but when you use these properties, they eh, it's a little bit bigger, right? So um, what's the first property I see in here? Well, I see division, right? Division. So I can use the quotient property of logarithms, which says that I can write that as subtraction, right? So go ahead and do that. Pause the video, work it out. Three, two, one. All right, welcome back. Let's see what we got. I'm going to write that as subtraction. Okay, now what can we do? Well, let's look in here. Here I've got multiplication, right? It's four times x to the sixth. I can write multiplication as addition. And what about this guy? Well, let's, you know what, let's leave this guy for now. We'll take care of him in the next step. Now, can I do anything about log base five of four? I don't think so. That's as simple as that one's gonna get. I can't simplify that anymore. However, this one we can use, we have an exponent, so we can use the exponent property here. It says the exponent comes down out front as a multiplication. Exponentiation becomes multiplication. So this one becomes six times log base five of x. What about this? Square root of y. Can I do anything with that? Well, if you think about it, you should realize that square root of y, let's write it up here. Square root of y is the same thing as y to the one half power. So it is an exponent. So I can bring that exponent down. So the one half comes down so there you go. We've expanded this out. And notice we've took these complicated operations like exponentiation, multiplication, and division, and the square root, and we've written them all as simpler operations as we've done that. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, so now let's uh, try condensing something. Let's do the other way around. Condense. So we're going to start with something expanded out like this and try to compress it back down. Condense that guy, okay? Okay, well, uh, what can I do here? Um, you know, if these numbers weren't here, I could just combine them using that quotient property, you know, subtraction becomes division, right? But there's numbers out here, so let's take care of these numbers first. How can I take care of these numbers? Well, that's using that third property in the reverse. I'm gonna go from here to here, so the P is going to come up as an exponent. Well, that's what we're gonna do. This one third comes up as an exponent. So that is the same as log base three of four to the one third. And, what, and same thing over here, the two comes up as an exponent. Okay, well now I've just got log, log. I don't have numbers out front, so now I can use this property here. I see there's no numbers out front, that's when you can use it. This becomes the log of a quotient, right? So let's use that. This is gonna become the log base three of four to the one third over x minus one squared. And there we go, that's the answer. However, I would say that you could also write it like this. I, I wouldn't say that one is correct and the other one's not. I'm just giving you an alternative way to write it. We could write it as the cube root of four. All right, it just depends. That's a matter of taste. Okay, whether you write it this way or this way.
All right, so using properties of logarithms, that's what we did today. And I uh, hope you found that useful.